Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Programming Scientific Computing and Optimization Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering and control theory. In this tutorial we explain how to implement in C++ one very important control algorithm. Arguably, after the PAD controller, the algorithm that will be implemented in this video tutorial is the most important control algorithm. Namely, we explain how to numerically solve a linear quadratic regulator optimal control problem. We explain how to implement the solution from scratch in C++ by using the Eigen matrix library. The linear quadratic optimal regulator is often abbreviated as LQR. In this video tutorial, you will learn that in order to solve the LQR control problem, you will need to solve the Riccati matrix equation. Then you will learn how to solve the Riccati matrix equation by using the Newton method and by solving a series of Lyapunov matrix equations. Then you will learn how to implement the solution in the disciplined and object-oriented manner. You will learn how to write the class that implements and embeds the solution. Here is the class. Then you will learn how to write a driver code file for this class that will compute the solution and save the solution in the comma separated value files such that you can use these files in other programs. Also, we will compare our implemented solution with the solution of the LQR problem implemented in Python. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! Here is a brief outline of this video tutorial. First, we will briefly go over the basic formulation of the LQR optimal control problem. Then, we will explain a method for solving the LQR optimal control problem. Namely, we will explain how to use the Newton method to solve the Riccati equation whose solution solves the LQR problem. Then, we will explain the importance of the Lyapunov equation for solving the LQR control problem. After that, we will explain how to implement the solution in C++. At the end of this tutorial, we will compare our implementation with the implementation computed by using the Python's control systems library. And finally, by the end of this video tutorial, you will be able to generate this beautiful graph that shows the state trajectories computed by implementing the solution of the LQR control problem in C++. Okay, let's start. First, we introduce the LQR control problem. We consider a linear state space model given by the equation number one. Here, A, B, and C are the system matrices, X is the state vector, and Y is the output vector. The linear quadratic optimal control problem, also known as the linear quadratic regulator, or abbreviated as LQR problem, is to determine a state feedback control matrix K and the state feedback control low given by the equation number two that will optimize this cost function. In this cost function, Q is the symmetric positive definite weight matrix that penalizes the speed of the response. R is the symmetric positive definite weight matrix that penalizes the control input. That is, this matrix penalizes the control energy. And S is the mixed input state weight matrix. The solution of the LQR optimization problem, that is the gain, K, in this equation, is found by first solving the associated Riccati equation. The Riccati equation is given by the equation number 4. Over here, capital X is the solution of the Riccati equation that we want to find. That is, X is the matrix that we need to determine. Once we determine this matrix X, the LQR control gain K is given by this equation. By applying this control law, or better to say this equation, 
to our state equation, we obtain the closed loop system given by the equation number six. This matrix A minus BK is stable despite the fact that the open loop matrix A can be unstable. Due to this, the state trajectories X will asymptotically approach zero. That is, the system will be stabilized. Here, it should be kept in mind that the LQR is presented for regulator problems, that is, for steering the state trajectory to the equilibrium point. In practice, the state X is actually often an error of the feedback control system, that is, the LQR algorithm can easily be modified and be used for designing a set point tracking algorithms. You can learn more about this in my previous tutorials. I will provide links to these tutorials in the description below this tutorial. We learned that in order to compute the solution of the LQR problem, we need to solve the Riccati matrix equation. One of the most elegant methods for solving the Riccati equation is the Newton matrix algorithm. This algorithm is designed for solving nonlinear matrix equations. It transforms the problem of solving the nonlinear Riccati matrix equation into a series of subproblems, where in every subproblem we need to solve the Lyapunov equation. That is, the Newton method iteratively solves the Riccati equation by solving a series of the Lyapunov equations. Here are the two books that thoroughly explain the Newton method for solving the Riccati equation. This book and this book. Here is the Newton method for solving the Riccati equation. In the first step, we need to compute an initial stabilizing guess of the solution that's denoted by x0. This solution is computed such that the initial closed loop matrix A1 bar, given by this equation, is a stable matrix. Here, K1 is an initial LQR gain matrix computed on the basis of the initial guess. I will explain later on how to compute the initial stabilizing guess x0. In the step number 2, for k is equal 1, 2, etc., and until convergence, we compute the solution xk as follows. First, we compute the LQR gain at the step k, that is, we compute kk by using xk minus 1 that's computed from the previous step x k minus 1, and kk is given by this equation. In this equation, xk minus 1 is known from the previous iteration, k minus 1. Then, we compute the closed loop matrix, a k bar, like this, by using this equation. Finally, we compute xk by solving the following Lyapunov equation. Here it is. The right-hand side of this equation is perfectly known since we pre-computed kk on the basis of xk minus 1, and on the left-hand side we know ak bar, that's the coefficient matrix, and we need to compute xk. It is very important to observe that we solve the Riccati matrix equation by solving a series of Lyapunov equations given by the equation 10 for different values of k, k is 1, 2, etc. Before we explain how to solve the Lyapunov equation, we need to explain how to compute the initial stabilizing guess of the solution in the first step. And let's do that. Here, we will use an approach that is based on the approach presented in section 3.3 of this book. First, we need to compute this matrix called A nu, like this, and we compute B nu, like this. Then, we compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A nu. Let the real parts of these eigenvalues be denoted like this, lambda real 1, lambda real 2, until lambda real n. We have n eigenvalues since the matrix A nu is n-dimensional. Then, we compute the parameter alpha. Alpha is equal to the minimum value of the real parts of the eigenvalues. Then we define the parameter beta, like this, where epsilon is a small number selected by the user. In our case, and in our code that will be explained later on, we are using epsilon is equal 0 0.02. 
However, this, can, this parameter can be seen as a tuning parameter. Then, for such computed beta, we construct the matrix A beta like this, where IN over here is n-dimensional identity matrix. Then, we compute the matrix Z by solving this Lyapunov equation. Over here, the right-hand side is known, since B nu is known, and the coefficient matrix A beta is given by this equation. Then, after solving this Lyapunov equation, we compute the initial gas X0 of the solution by simply inverting Z, that is, inverting the solution, and by multiplying the result by B nu transpose. Under a few standard assumptions, it's guaranteed that this solution will stabilize our closed-loop matrix A1 bar. Let's go back and let's see A1 bar. Here it is. Again, this method will produce X0 that will guarantee that this matrix A1 bar is a stable matrix. Why do we need a stable matrix for initial guess? Well, it is known that if X0 is such that the matrix A bar is stable, then the algorithm will actually converge. The Newton method will converge. Next, let's learn how to solve the Lyapunov equation. We learned that we need to solve the Lyapunov equation in order to compute the initial guess and in order to compute the solution of the Riccati equation. There are a number of methods for solving the Lyapunov equation. In my previous tutorial, which can be found over here, you can click on this link to find the tutorial, and I will also provide a link to this tutorial in the description below this video. Namely, in this tutorial, you can learn how to solve the Lyapunov equation by using the Kronecker product and the vectorization approach. Here is the tutorial. And I will briefly summarize this approach. Those of you who want to know more, please watch the corresponding video and read this tutorial. So, what's the main idea over here? Let us consider a general form of the Lyapunov equation. Over here, M is the coefficient matrix, P is the matrix that we want to solve, and W is the right-hand side matrix. By applying the vectorization operator to this equation, we can transform the equation 17 into equation number 18 where now the coefficient matrix is much larger. However, the advantage over here is that this term over here is actually a vector, and the right-hand side is a vector. And over here, we simply have a system that looks like a square system, or actually better to say rectangular. We have a vector, we have a matrix, and we have a right-hand side. Consequently, we can solve this linear system of equations in the standard form to compute the solution. Now, I have to mention that this approach for solving the Lyapunov equation is not the most efficient one, and there are way more efficient ways for solving the Lyapunov equation. However, from the implementation point of view, this approach is super easy, and consequently, that's why I selected this approach. Finally, to test the presented LQR solution method, we need to consider a test example. And here is our test example. It's a system consisting of two masses that are connected by springs and dampers. I created a separate tutorial that explains how to determine and how to derive the state space model corresponding to this system. Over here, I will briefly summarize the state space model. Namely, by applying Newton's second law and by assigning the state space variables, we can obtain the state space model given by the equation number 19. x1 is the position of the first mass, x2 is the velocity of the first mass, x3 is the position of the second mass, and x4 is the velocity of the second mass. Over here, k1, k2, d1, d2, m1, and m2 are the parameters that are known. Here is the state space model. The input to this state space model is this force F, and here it is. This is our control input. That is, we are using this force to control the position of these masses. And you can see how the AC, BC, and C matrices look like. 
over here I assume that I'm only measuring the output of the first mass. That is, I'm measuring the position of the first mass. However, for the LQR implementation, we will not need the output equation. Next, we need to learn how to implement the solution of the LQR control problem in C++. To make this video tutorial as short as possible, I will simply download the code files that I previously created. To do that, I need to go to my GitHub page and I need to find this repository. I will provide the link to this repository in the description below this video tutorial. Next, I need to download these C++ and Python files. To do that, I will click on code and I will click on download zip. The files will be in my downloads folder. Here they are. Then I will simply extract these files to a new folder. Over here on my C drive under codes, I will create a new folder and I will call it LQR test1. And over here I will extract the files. Here they are. Next, we need to learn how to open, how to build and compile these files. To compile these files, we will be using the VS Code editor. I created a separate video tutorial that explains how to use the VS Code editor and how to install the Microsoft Visual Studio C++ compiler in VS Code editor. Links to these tutorials are provided in the description below this video tutorial. Consequently, I strongly suggest you to watch these video tutorials before continuing to watch, it, to watch this video tutorial. Let's learn how to build these files. You need to click on Start and then you need to type Developer. You will see Developer command prompt for VS 2022. Namely, if you don't have Microsoft Visual Studio, you will not see this program. Consequently, you need to install the Microsoft Visual Studio. That is, you need to install the Microsoft Visual Studio C++ compiler. Again, I provided a tutorial that explains how to do that. A link to this tutorial is given in the description below this video tutorial. So let's click on Developer Command Prompt. Okay, here it is. Next, we need to locate the folder of our source files. Over here, I need to find the folder. So here is the folder. It is called LQR underscore test1. Consequently, I need to type CD and I'll simply paste the folder. Here it is. Next, to start the Visual Studio, actually VS Code Editor, I need to type code dot. And here it is. To be able to compile these files, we need to install the Agen Matrix library. To do that, we need to actually to try to compile these files. So let's do that. You need to locate driver code. Now, I will press this button in order to compile this file. And of course, there will be a tons of errors. However, you should watch over here. So focus on this part of the screen. And let's see what will happen. First of all, you need to select the compiler. I will be using the Microsoft Visual Studio C++ compiler. Consequently, I will select this option. And let's see what happened. Aha, uh -huh. we can see a new folder over here. Perfect. Just close this window and go over here and open this file. This file sets the parameters for our compiler and over here we need to enter the path to our Agen C++ matrix library. Again, I created a separate video tutorial that explains how to install the Agen matrix library. A link to this tutorial is given in the description below this video tutorial. I need to find the path to my Agen C++ matrix library. In my case, the library 
is installed over here on the C folder under toolbox and here's my Eigen Matrix C++ library. I just need this path actually. So I will copy this part over here. Then I will go to my VS Code editor and to this file. I will add the comma over here. Then I will type something like this. I need to change my path such that it looks like this. And over here I need to add dash i. Here it is. I'm saying here to my compiler include this path to my Eigen matrix library. That's the first step. Next, I need another configuration file in this folder. To generate this file, I will press control, hold control, press shift, hold shift and press P and click over here. Immediately, you will see this properties file. Over here, you need to include the path. Go back to the JSON file, that is to this file, tasks.json, then go back to this file, type comma over here, copy and paste this path, and erase dash C. And that's it. Save this file, and let's try to compile our driver code. Go to the driver code, and let's try to compile, and let's hope that everything will work properly. And notice over here, you will see certain files being generated over here. I will explain these files later on. Let's see what happens. Let's hope that everything works perfectly. Building, building, building and building, and perfect works perfectly. You can see that we have some output, something is being computed, perfect. Works as it should work. I've wrote a C++ class that implements the LQR control algorithm and here's the header file. Let's explain this file. First we need to include string, then we need to include eigendance. Eigendense is a header file for manipulating dense matrices by using the Eigen library. Then we are using the namespace Eigen and the namespace std. Here is the default constructor. I'm not using the default constructor. I might edit this constructor later on. Here is the constructor that I'm actually using. Let's step back and let us revise the LQR control problem. We have a state equation that looks like this. Then we have the cost function and this cost function depends on the state and depends on the weight matrices Q, R and this mixed weight matrix S. And we have dt over here, t goes from 0 to infinity. That is, to set up our LQR control problem, we need to provide A matrix, here it is, B matrix, here it is, and we need to provide the weight matrices, Q matrix, R matrix, and S matrix. Then we have this function called compute initial guess. This function will compute the initial guess by using this procedure that we explained at the beginning of this video tutorial. The solution will be stored in this matrix. Next, this function is used to solve the Lyapunov equation by using the vectorization and Kronecker approach. Again, we explained this approach at the beginning of this video tutorial. Over here, we have m. However, in our function, m is denoted by am and rm is the right-hand side, that is the matrix w. This function will simply form the lifted system by using the vectorization approach and it will solve this linear system in order to compute the solution p. The solution p will be stored in this matrix called solution matrix and this variable is used to track 
the accuracy of solving the Lyapunov equation. Finally, we have this function that computes the solution by using the Newton approach. This function accepts these two input variables. Number iterations is the maximum number of iterations, and the tolerance is the convergence tolerance of the Newton method. That is, after this tolerance is reached, that is, after the actual error is below this tolerance, we stop the Newton's method. This function will simulate the closed loop system. The closed loop system is obtained from the open loop system. Let's explain this. The open loop system has this form. The computed control law is equal to minus k time x, and by substituting this equation, in this equation, we obtain the closed loop system. x dot is equal to a minus bk times x. This function will simulate this system. First, it will discretize this system, and then it will simulate discrete time system. H is the discretization step. Simulation time steps is the total number of simulation steps, and x0 is the initial state. And finally, this function is used to save the computed data. This function will save the computed control gain, the computed closed loop A matrix, it will save the solution of the Riccati equation, and it will save the simulated state trajectory obtained by simulate system function. Here we need to provide input arguments. The input arguments are strings representing the names of the files, and the function will save all the data in CSV format, that is, in comma-separated value. And here are the saved functions, matrices, and trajectories. Over here, you can see the private member variables. They are the system matrices, the weight matrices, the LQR control gain matrix, the LQR closed loop matrix, the solution of the Riccati equation, the identity matrix, and the simulated state trajectory. We also store the state dimension and the input dimension. That was the header file. Let's look into the implementation file. Here it is. These header files are the standard C++ header files. Then we have eigen header files. We include eigen dense for performing matrix operations on dense matrices. Then we include this header file. This header file is used for Kronecker product. To remind you, we use the Kronecker product to compute the solution of the Lyapunov equation. And over here is the header file for computing the eigenvalues of matrices. Here is our constructor. This constructor will accept the input arguments, that is the A, B matrices, the weight matrices, Q, R, and S. It will assign these input variables to private member variables. Then it will create the K matrix, A closed loop matrix, solution Riccati identity matrix. And that's it. Simple as that. The next function is used to compute the initial guess. The input argument of this function is also the output argument. That is, we will store the result in this matrix. Over here we define A new and B new matrices. Here they are, A new and B new. Then we need to compute the eigenvalues of A new. Here's how we do that. We create the eigensolver object, we specify the name of the matrix, and we compute the eigenvalues of A new. Then we need to compute the B parameter. B parameter is actually the beta parameter in this equation. To compute this parameter, we need to compute the minimum of the real values of the eigenvalues of the matrix A nu. And we do that as follows. We define this vector that's used to store the real parts of the eigenvalues. Then in this for loop, we go over the eigenvalues of the A nu matrix 
and we simply store the real part. Note over here this variable lambda and it's of the type complex. This variable is used to store the eigenvalues and to extract the real number we will simply type lambda.real. Over here we compute the beta parameter. First we compute the minimum real part, then we multiply the result with minus 1. Over here you can see that. And we proceed. Then we compute the B parameter like this. Over here you should observe that the epsilon value is 0.02. That is, the epsilon value in this equation is 0.02. I notice that the performance of the algorithm largely depends on the value of epsilon. For example, if you increase this epsilon value, for certain matrices the solution will not converge. Then we need to define the matrix A beta. Here is the matrix and this is how we implement this matrix in C++. Notice one difference over here. We need to transpose the matrix in C++. This is because our solution for the Lyapunov equation was defined for the Lyapunov equations in this form. However, we need to solve this Lyapunov equation. That is, our A beta need to be transposed such that our Lyapunov solver can solve the equation. That's why we transpose the result. Next, we define the right-hand side of the Lyapunov equation, that is, the right-hand side of this equation, and next, we solve the Lyapunov equation. First, we define the matrix, we set that matrix to zero, we set the residual to a large number, and we call the function solve Lyapunov equation. I will explain this function in the sequel. For the time being, I will just explain the following. This function accepts as input arguments our A bar matrix, that's the coefficient matrix on the left hand side. It accepts the right hand side. It accepts the solution and this function will actually fill in this matrix, that is the solution will be stored in this matrix and it accepts this variable that's used to track the error, the solution error. After we compute the solution Z, the final value of the initial guess is defined by this equation. And here's how we implement this equation in C++. Here it is. So we take our solution, we invert that matrix, and we multiply the result by B new transpose. And finally, we do the following trick. This solution did not necessarily be equal to a symmetric matrix. Over here, I perform a simple heuristics. I symmetrize this matrix by adding initial guess matrix to initial guess matrix transpose, and I divide the result by one half. And this will ensure that initial guess matrix is a symmetric matrix. Next, we explain the function for computing the solution of the Lyapunov equation. We need to solve this equation. And the input arguments are given over here. They are the coefficient matrix AM in the code. This is our matrix M. The right-hand side is denoted by W in the equation. In our code, the right-hand side is denoted by RM. We store the result in this matrix and we store the residual in this matrix. Over here, we use the Kronecker product function to compute this matrix. That is, the Kronecker product function will return this matrix. Then, we need to compute the right-hand side and we need to store the solution. First of all, we need to vectorize the right-hand side. We do that by calling the function reshape. This function will create a vector out of the matrix Rm. That is, it will create vecw. On this side. Over here we compute the solution, that is we solve this system of linear equations and we use 
this method, complete orthogonal decomposition. You also have other methods implemented in Agent C++ matrix library, and over here I commented different methods. Of course, you can also directly invert the coefficient matrix to compute the solution. However, this should be the least efficient method. Finally, after we compute the solution, we reshape the result to obtain our solution matrix. And over here, again, I symmetrize the solution by performing this trick. Finally, we compute the residual matrix. The residual matrix is simply the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the Lyapunov equation. And if the Lyapunov equation is correctly computed, then this difference or the residual should be close to zero. And this is what I do here. I compute the residual matrix and I compute the Frobenius norm of the residual matrix and I assign the result to this variable residual. This function computes the solution of the LQR control problem. The input arguments are the maximum number of iterations for the while loop and the tolerance for the while loop. I will explain the while loop later on. Over here, we compute the initial guess. To compute the initial guess, we first form the matrix for the initial guess and we call the function compute initial guess. Then, over here, we verify that initial guess will actually stabilize our closed loop matrix. That is, we compute the eigenvalues of our matrix A1 bar all the eigenvalues should be strictly in the left half of the complex plane if the initial solution x0 stabilizes this matrix. And to do that, we actually compute the eigenvalues of the initial matrix. But before we do that, we actually form the gain matrix, the initial gain matrix K, we compute the initial closed loop, and we compute the eigenvalues. Finally, we plot the eigenvalues. Then we assign the computed initial guess to the matrix used to store the solution of the Riccati equation. And this matrix is a private member matrix. Next, we define a matrix that's used to solve the solution of the Lyapunov equation. To remind you, in step number two, we need to solve this Lyapunov equation. And I will store the solution, that is this matrix, in this matrix, solution Lyapunov. Then we define the matrix that's used to store the right-hand side of the Lyapunov equation. That is, to store this right-hand side. Next, this update matrix will actually be the difference between the current value of the solution and the previous value of the solution. I need this matrix in order to compute the relative error and in order to track the convergence of the algorithm and to stop the algorithm when the relative error is below the tolerance specified over here. This is a very important step. Next, we define these variable residual Lyapunov and error convergence that are used number one for tracking the residual of the Lyapunov equation and number two for tracking the convergence. And this variable is actually computed on the, on the basis of the actual value of the solution of the Lyapunov equation. Then we set the current iteration to zero and in this while loop we compute the solution. That is, in, the, in that while loop we perform step number two iteratively by increasing k. And k is tracked by this parameter, current iteration. First, we need to compute the gain matrix. To compute the gain matrix, we need this temporary matrix. And once we compute the temporary matrix, we compute the gain. This equation is the implementation of the gain given by the equation number 8. Next, we need to compute the closed loop matrix. Here's how we do it in C++. And here's how we do it mathematically. After we do that, we need to define the right-hand side of our Lyapunov equation. Here's the C++ implementation. 
and here's how we do it mathematically. This is the right hand side and this is how we do it in C++. Once we do that, we have everything for solving the Lyapunov equation. Over here, we solve the Lyapunov equation given by the equation 10. We specify the coefficient matrix, we specify the right hand side, we specify the solution, that is, the solution will be stored in this matrix, and we specify the residual. Once we compute the solution, we simply subtract this solution and the solution Riccati from the previous time step, right? We need to compute a relative error. Here's how we compute the relative error. We simply compute the ratio of the one norms between the error matrix and the solution of the Riccati equation from the previous step. If this error is below the prescribed convergence tolerance, that is below this variable over here called tolerance, we will break the while loop. And you can see it over here how we do that. Similarly, if we break the while loop, once the current iteration number exceeds the maximum number of iterations, and maximum number of iterations is specified over here. And finally, we set the solution Riccati to be equal to the current value of the solution of the Lyapunov equation and we increment the index. And we do that recursively, recursively, recursively until these conditions are broken. Once we do that, we perform diagnostics, we print out something such that the user knows what's happening over here is a success, that is the solution is computed within prescribed error tolerance, we print the converged error, we print the number of iterations. If it didn't converge, we simply type maximum number of, max of iteration exceeded and we print these three messages. After the neuron iteration is completed, we need to test the solution. One of the ways to test the solution is to compute the eigenvalues of a closed loop. That is, we need to compute the eigenvalues of this matrix where kk is the final computed LQR gain. All the eigenvalues of this matrix have to be strictly in the left half of the complex plane. This is how we do that in C++. We create the eigensolver object, we specify the closed loop matrix, and over here, we print the eigenvalues. And we print the K matrix. Okay, that was the function for computing the solution. The next step is to simulate the solution. That is, the next step is to simulate the closed loop system trajectories. To do that, we need to discretize the closed loop system. Here's our closed loop system. X dot is equal to ACL times x, where ACL is equal to A minus BK, and K is the final value of the computed LQR gain. To discretize this equation, we use the backward Euler method. We approximate x dot as xk minus xk minus 1 divided by h, and this should be equal to A closed loop times xk. After manipulating this equation, we will obtain that xk is actually equal to identity matrix minus h times a closed loop inverse times xk minus 1. Over here, I sim simply moved this matrix from right-hand side to the left-hand side, and I moved xk minus 1 from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and I perform a few algebraic multiplications. Uh, manipulations to obtain this equation. And we can see that this is a simple equation that can be propagated in time. We start with some initial value x0 and by propagating this equation, that is by multiplying x0 with this matrix, we will compute x1. And in the same manner we can compute x2. We simply take x1 then we take this matrix, we multiply it by x1, and we obtain x2. 
and we do that recursively. And here's how we do that to compute the simulated state trajectory. The input arguments of this function are x0, this is the initial condition, then we have simulate, simulation time steps, this is the total number of simulation time steps, and we have the h parameter. The h parameter is the discretization time step. That was the implementation file. Next, we need to explain the driver code. Here it is. First, we need to include the necessary header files. We need input-output stream, we need vectors, we need eigen-dense, we need eigen, eigen values, and we need to include the header and the implementation file. We are using the namespace eigen and we are using the namespace std. Over here, we define our system. First of all, we need to define the system parameters. The system is given over here. And here is the state space model. Here's how A, C, B, C, and C look like. And we need to formulate these matrices by using the eigen C++ library. Here's how we do that. Here's our AC matrix, AC over here, and AC over here. Here's BC matrix, and here's the BC matrix in the code, and here's the CC matrix over here, and here's the CC matrix in our tutorial. Next, I need to specify the initial condition for simulating the closed loop system. I set this initial condition, however, you can change this initial condition as you wish. Then I specify the total number of simulation steps. I specify the discretization time constant. Over here, I extract the number of rows and columns of my matrices AC and BC. And over here, I construct the weight matrices. That is, I construct the weight matrices of our LQR cost function, that is, the weighting matrices of this cost function. You can see Q, R, and S. And here's how we specify them in C++. Here's Q, here's R, and here's S. Next, I define the tolerances for computing the solution, and I define the max number of iterations over here and over here. Here's how we construct the LQR control object. We create the object and we call the constructor. We specify the system matrices and we specify the weight matrices. Then we call the function compute solution. This function will compute the gain matrix, the closed loop matrix, and the solution of the Riccati equation. And finally we simulate the system. After we do that, we call this function save data. I didn't explain this function, however, this function is given in the implementation file. This function is straightforward. We simply take the names of the files, here they are, and then we save every matrix that's actually a private variable of our class into the corresponding file. And that's it, nothing special. Let's run this driver code and let's see what will happen. Over here, I will expand my terminal and we should observe what's happening over here. It takes some time to build the file and to compile everything. And here it is. What do we see over here? Here are the eigenvalues of the initial closed loop matrix. That is, these are the eigenvalues of our A bar 1. That is, the eigenvalues of this matrix. Let's analyze these eigenvalues. We can see that the real parts of these eigenvalues are negative. This means that we have actually computed a stabilizing initial guess. That's the first good sign. Over here, we obtained the message. We got the message. It's written, solution computed within prescribed error tolerances. And we plot the converged relative error, and we plot the number of iterations. We can see that we have able to compute the solution in six steps. 
that's really fast. Next, we plot the eigenvalues of the final closed loop matrix. That is, we plot the eigenvalues of this matrix. We do that to verify the solution. We can see that the eigenvalues are in the left half of the complex plane. That is, the real parts of the eigenvalues are negative. This means that we have actually computed the stabilizing solution. And here is our computed K matrix. The computed matrices, as well as the state trajectory, are saved in this comma-separated value files. Let's see them. Here is our A closed loop. Here is our gain matrix. Here is our computed state trajectory. And here is the computed solution of the Riccati equation. However, since we are developing a control algorithm from scratch, we need some baseline. That is, we need to compare this solution with the standard approach for solving the Riccati equation and for computing the solution of the LQR control problem. For that purpose, we will use Python, and we will use the Python's control systems toolbox. Over here, I wrote two functions to see the solution and to verify and compare the solution that we computed in C++ with the Python solution. There are two Python files that you need to open. You need to open this Python file and you need to open this Python file. To open these Python files, I will not be using the VS Code editor, I will use the Spider environment. I like Spider very much since it reminds me of MATLAB. Let me open these files by using Spider. Okay, here they are. And let's analyze these files. First of all, this file is used to visualize the results. This file will open several comma separated value files. It will open this one that stores the closed loop matrix. It will open this one that stores the gain matrix. It will open this file that stores the state trajectory. And it will open this file that stores the computed solution of the Riccati equation. And over here, I will plot the state trajectories. I will erase everything. I will clear everything over here. And let's see the state trajectories. Here they are. Pretty amazing. We start from some initial condition. And to remind you, the initial condition is actually defined over here in the driver code. Here it is. And here's the initial condition. We have four values. And for every initial condition, we have the corresponding state trajectory. We can see that after maybe 15 or 20 time steps, the computed state trajectories, that is, the trajectories of the closed loop system, approach zero. This means that the LQR controller is working as it should work. That is, it stabilizes the system. However, that's not all. The next step is to compare our C++ solution with the solution computed by using the Python control systems toolbox. Over here, I created a simple Python script that solves the LQR problem in Python by using the corresponding function, and the name of the function is LQR. This function is one of the main function of the Python's control systems toolbox. To install that toolbox, you will simply have to type in your command window pip install control. Let's analyze this file and let's explain its main components. First, we need to import the plotting tools. We need to import the control systems library. We import it as ct and we import numpy. Over here, we define our system. You can see over here how we do that in Python. And here, here's how we do it in C++. It is very similar. After we do that, we need to define the constants r and m and n. These are the number of inputs and outputs and the state dimension. Next, we need to define our state space model. We use the function ct.ss and let's see the result. Over here, you'll probably need to type print this 
value. Let's see what will happen. Yeah, so here is the state space model. Next, we need to define initial condition. And for computing the LQR solution, I actually don't need the initial condition. That is, I don't need the state. And over here, I need to define the weight matrices. Here's my Q matrix. Here's my R matrix. And let's see the corresponding C++ definition. Here's my Q matrix. And here's my R matrix. You have to make sure that Q and R match each other. And we can see that they match each other. This function will compute the following quantities. It will solve the LQR control problem and it will compute the K gain matrix, the S, the solution of the Riccati equation, and E, it will also compute the closed loop eigenvalues. So let's run this function and let's see the result. Okay, let's see our K. This K matrix is computed by using the Python implementation of LQR. Let us compare this matrix with our C++ solution. Here it is. Wow, almost the same. You can compare the constants. You can see this one almost matches this one. This one matches this one almost. This one also. And this one also matches this one. Actually, we have up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least up to seven floating digits match. This is pretty amazing. Let's compare the other computed values. That is, let's compare the solution of the Riccati equation. This is the Python solution. And let's see the C++ solution. And let's compare the results. We can actually also do that by doing something like this. Wow, we can see that up to 10 to the minus 15, we were able to accurately compute the solutions. That is, the solution almost perfectly match. And finally, let's check the eigenvalues. Over here are the eigenvalues of the solution, that is, of the closed-loop matrix computed by using the Python solver. Here they are. And let's look into the solution, that is, the eigenvalues computed by using C++. I will simply copy and paste this part, and I'll show it over here. And then I'll make comparisons. I'll simply copy and paste the results over here. And let's see what's happening. Again, very good match. You can see this second value and this second value. Then you can see this second value and this second value. And finally, you can see this real second value. Perfect. To conclude, by comparing our C++ implementation with the Python implementation of the LQR solver, we conclude that our implementation works. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.